stop the fight. It's a Dallas knockout, 102-77. The series is not over, but we grow one game closer as the Mavericks put one on the Jazz here in a always pivotal Game 5 matchup. Luka Doncic leading the way for the first time in his career. Back-to-back 30-plus point, 10-plus rebound performances. He goes for 33-13 and 13 in this one. Utah abysmal from the field offensively. And that is highlighted by their 3 of 30 performance from long range. And adding some injury to insult, Donovan Mitchell did leave the game in the fourth quarter with what appeared to be a hamstring injury. We will bring you all the latest here on HQ. But Dallas now one win away from their first postseason series win since the 2011 NBA Finals. For more, we say hello to NBA analyst Tim Doyle here to break down this no contest of sorts here between Utah and Dallas. TD offensively, Utah couldn't get anything going. Their star has to exit in the fourth. It's only one game, but in the grand scheme of the series, seemed like almost a knockout punch here from the Mavericks. You know, and I said this midway through this series, it feels like overall from a Jazz perspective that this is the last dance. Mm that when they get eliminated in the series, I'm not necessarily saying they're going to lose game six at home. They're not winning game seven in Dallas. What I watched today was target practice. But I felt like if the Jazz lose this series and when they lose this series, they have to take, a, take an overall look at the makeup of this squad and be like, all right, what are we? Last year, a great regular season team. This year, not as good, but still very good. But man, we cannot win in the playoffs. And we have this amazing big man in Rudy Gobert, who's great in the regular season, but Joey's almost a liability on defense in the playoffs. And now Donovan Mitchell, you see him struggling off the floor there. He struggled from the field. Uh, to say that the, the Jazz struggled from three is an understatement. They were three of 30. Joe, there was a stretch this year in December where the Jazz had not one, not two, three, games where they made 20 plus threes in the month of December and now it just seems like they're limping to the finish line but series is not over they go home they get an extra day of rest they cannot win game six if Donovan Mitchell does not play but the energy the effort and Dallas's defense let's credit the Mavericks here made this really a no contest yeah defense and commitment to the boards here uh, Dallas led by Luka really crashing the boards and it was not long ago maybe last week we were talking about one game to none the Lucas Mavs they look hapless uh, and this would not be a team that would look to even you know move on let alone make noise beyond this series but Luka really shifts the paradigm for this team. 50% from the field, 13 rebounds, uh, dished out a few dimes, five assists as well. TD, when you take a look at Luka, and we saw him at his best here on Monday night, I mean, he inspires what thought in you, because he's just one of those guys that's so fun to watch, and you can see his fingerprints all over this series since returning from that calf injury. Yeah, I mean, the, the Jazz just have no answer for him. Uh, they put Bogdanovich on him, and I was just thinking to myself, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and then, I mean, he's basically see him right here, just getting whatever he wanted. He had 19 points in the third quarter, Doncic did. That's exactly the same amount of points as the Jazz had. Uh, and really, a sign of we can't guard you is a team going zone. And midway through that third quarter, uh, the Utah Jazz and Quinn Snyder just yelled at mercy. Like, we're just going to go zone. We basically cannot guard you man-to-man. -man. That's why teams in the NBA go zone. And then you just pray teams miss. But they went zone to try to hide Rudy Gobert. Uh, it's just this is a bad matchup. And you got to credit Dallas's defense. Here's what the Utah Jazz, one of the best scoring teams in the NBA, scored in a playoff game. 18 in the first quarter, 18 in the second quarter, 19 in the third quarter, and with the exception of two very, very late scores in the Jazz, mm -hmm. 22 points. So there would have been another quarter that they were below 20 points. So I know they missed a ton of shots, but watch the rotations. Watch the energy. Dallas is guarding an elite level. Like if Dallas plays Phoenix right now, ooh, that would not be good. Obviously no Devin Booker. But who even knows if Phoenix is going to get out of their series? They're knotted up at two at the Pelicans. Uh, yeah, hamstring issues all over the board as we try and make sense of the West TD. But as we move this thing forward, Dallas was available out there five and a half to one after game one, uh, suffering that game one loss. They were a big ticket looming that might have been handed out here on HQ. Who's really to say, but as we move forward, Tim, how does Utah force game seven? What do they have to do in game six outside of getting a 
somewhat healthy Donovan Mitchell out there on the floor. You know, I'm going to give you something that, that I, I know you're going to go, what? I think the game starts with the crowd. I think the energy level down there in Dallas has been second to none. Mm. It's been the best atmosphere so far in the playoffs. I thought the crowd won game two along with Jalen Brunson. And I know this is in college, but these guys feed off of that. I don't care what you say. The place is going crazy. You, you give more effort. And then coaches don't want to hear this. But when you're making some more shots, you play harder on defense. I'm calling out the Salt Lake crowd, which they've always been known for, let's just say, some antics out there, mm-hmm. you know, giving Jordan you know, bad pizza before games and stuff. Like, it, it, it's a place that has to energize this team because what I saw today, wow, that was like Night of the Living Dead. They were legit sleepwalking out there in a playoff game. And it just that message to me says that inside the organization, they know this thing's getting blown up. So there's going to be movement with a spider or Rudy. Like they're not coming back because we've watched this movie so many times with the Jazz that you watch this thing will all of a sudden brick by brick start falling apart. So you know they're going to be home. They could shoot the three. Maybe they make 18 threes. But I think that I think the Jazz, after what I saw tonight, have 0.0 percent of winning this series unless Doncic and Brunson and the whole Mavericks team gets injured. All right, Tim Doyle, he's putting it out in front of the Utah faithful. You better bring it in game six. Thank you, TD. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's take a look at that series schedule. All that remains. Dallas making their way back to Utah. Both of these teams hopping the flight. That one not coming your way till Thursday, so an extra day of rest, rest, that is. And it could prove pivotal for Donovan Mitchell, who did injure his hamstring late in this matchup. And then if necessary, we could see seven back in Dallas on Saturday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.